Hello. So we're going to do a couple of continuous time Fourier transform properties that are useful both to in signal analysis, but they are particularly useful in system analysis. One of them is the convolution property, meaning the convolution in the time domain x of t convolved with h of t equals in the frequency domain multiplication, meaning that you can find the output as a function of frequency by multiplying the frequency response times the Fourier transform of the input signal. Let's think about this for a second. You put an impulse at the input of a system. The system is LTI. And we get, this is the, at the input, you get the impulse response at the output, H of T. In the time domain, you want to compute now a signal X of T at the input for the same system, LTI. How do we compute the output if we know H of T? We know what the system does for a signal, X of T. Well, we have to convolve it. X of T, convolve with H of T, or H of T, convolve with X of T. We have to evaluate the convolution integral. This is how you find the output in the time domain. Right? How will you do it in the frequency domain? Well, let's consider this has a frequency response. Low pass filter, high pass filter, whatever. Notice when you put a delta in, you send all the frequencies, right? H of J omega of a delta is represented by all the frequencies. So we send all the frequencies. Whatever you get out, your frequency response, the filter, let's imagine it's a something like this, a low pass filter, whatever it is. Low frequencies go through, high frequencies get cut, or, or vice versa, anything. Anything that was cut with respect to all the frequencies, because we were in a situation where the, the delta function has all of the frequencies, and not only has all of the frequencies, they are equally represented. It's not like a situation like this, where high frequencies are more represented than low frequencies, or like this, low frequencies more than high frequencies, or all over the place. No, all the frequencies are represented, so you send something else, whatever is no longer there was filtered out by the filter. Right? So in this case, what the, is it that we cut? We cut all the frequencies, the high frequencies. The, the, the frequency domain view is, well, awesome. I can just, for that signal that I have, I can compute the Fourier transform of the signal I know the spectrum. Is it something like that in the case of the delta? It could be something else. It could be some lines in the case of a sinusoid. It could be something that, that has any spectrum. So I'm going to put here a sample spectrum. Imagine that this is my spectrum of the signal that I'm sending, what is my output going to be? Well, it's going to be the multiplication, the output, the spectrum of the output is going to be multiplying the frequency response of the system times the spectrum of the input, the Fourier transform of the input, meaning if this is my system, And this is my input. <clears throat> and we have here what I'm going to get is that certain things are going to be cut. This is going to be cut, 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 right? 
So I'm going to get something like this. Oops. Perhaps I will get, I'm going to delete what it gets cut. This gets cut. Okay. Cannot do it like this. I will represent it like here. My output may be something like this. This got cut. This got cut. Okay. To find the output in the frequency domain, you or the spectrum of the output, you multiply the frequency response times the Fourier transform of the input. Notice that you can also use the inverse Fourier transform to then do the Y of T. So this is the interpretation. Another thing is we can do then the proof, but this is what it is. Convolution in the time domain is multiplication in the frequency domain. Vice versa, this is also the case. If you multiply in the time domain, you are doing convolution in the frequency domain. This is because of the duality of the Fourier transform. So it's the same, same graphical interpretation. If I'm doing if I multiply two things in the time domain, I want to see what will be the effect in the frequency domain of a multiplication in the time domain. It's actually a convolution in the frequency domain. And then another important property, and what I'm doing now is just explaining these properties. Uh, it's good to, to see them um, with some computer simulation, and then we can perhaps uh, prove them. This is, if you have something in the time domain and you multiply it times the complex exponential at a particular frequency, so y of t, you have a signal, x of t, you multiply it times e to the j omega zero t, that multiplication in the time domain times a sinusoid, this is a sinusoid with a single spectral line at omega zero, but it could be times a cosine, is what you do in amplitude modulation, what you are doing in the frequency domain to the spectrum is a shifting in frequency, meaning it's the same spectrum that you had at, at omega, but it gets shifted to that frequency. So let's see this graphically. Let's imagine that you have a signal that in the time domain, it has this spectrum. This is the spectrum of x of j omega. You pick that signal and you multiply times this complex exponential. What happens to the spectrum? Gets shifted. You get the same spectrum at a center at a frequency. Two sides of the spectrum. Well, in, the, in this case, one side of the spectrum, sorry. It's not times, if you do it times a cosine of omega zero t, you will get a two-sided spectrum. This, by the way, is the principle of amplitude modulation, right? So if you have a signal, we saw that, something like this, x of t, and you multiply it times, say, cosine of two pi fc, this is the carrier frequency, in which case what we have, if x of t is our speech or our information signal, I'm going to say that's an information signal, you multiply that times a cosine, this is a signal that cannot travel, cannot be radiated, we want to radiate it, but there is a signal, higher frequency, that can really be radiated, just denoting here a much higher frequency sinusoid, this is the cosine of 2 pi fct, now, you multiply one times the other, you get, in this case, something like this. This is the signal that you are radiating. What you did here, this multiplication in the time domain, times a complex exponential, this will be a single spectral line, or two complex exponentials, two spectral lines, positive or negative, what you are doing is that you are picking the spectrum that you have, this may be a speech, 
less than 20 kilohertz. It's the maximum we can hear. So let's imagine up to 4 kilohertz. This is something, your speech, and this is like 4 kilohertz. Imagine. Can you radiate something at 4 kilohertz between, I don't know, 300 hertz and 4 kilohertz? No, it will take a very, very long antenna. What can you do? Well, multiply that times a higher frequency. Okay, 550 kilohertz, for instance. Anything that is in the AM, uh, in the in the your AM radio when you are tuning it to a particular frequency, that's what you're doing. Uh, actually, what what happened is that the signal you are multiplying times something of a higher frequency, 750 kilohertz, whatever, and your spectrum shifted to that particular frequency. Now this is at 550 kilohertz. So multiplication in the time domain times a complex exponential at a particular frequency, omega zero or omega c, the carrier frequency, shift the spectrum there. Notice in this case that if I multiply times the cosine, a cosine is one half e to the j omega zero t plus one half e to the minus j omega zero t. And in that case, I will have the positive band as well as the negative. In this case, this operation that I did here of x of t multiplied times cosine of two pi fct, that's an example of amplitude mod modulation. Because it's cosine, you're going to have two side bands and so it's going to be a double sideband amplitude modulation. And because we are not sending the carrier this, you will see in your communication core that this is called as a suppressed carrier, it's more energy efficient, double sideband amplitude modulation. Okay. All we did was shifting the spectrum. And this is the idea that I mentioned that if you have the filter coefficients, for instance, for the low-pass filter, you have a low-pass filter. This is the frequency response of the ideal low-pass filter. Since the frequency response is the Fourier transform of the impulse response, you could think, what, what signal will produce that frequency response? You know, Fourier transform pairs, and you know, well, to do a rectangle, you need a sink. So, if you have a sink impulse response, if you have a way to do the sink impulse response, the more you approximate that sink, the closer it's going to get to the ideal frequency response, to the ideal low-pass filter. And that's why the filter coefficients when you're using the, the window method, for instance, in an FIR filter, if you do FIR1, 100 points, 200 points, something sufficiently large for a particular kind of frequency, you're going to get something coefficients that look sync-like because you apply Fourier transform to the sink and you get the rectangle, which is the frequency response that you want for a low-pass filter. Imagine you have those filter coefficients and you want to go to a low-pass filter to instead a band-pass filter. What you did was shifting that square to a particular frequency. How could you do that? Shifting the spectrum is down what multiplication times that j omega j omega zero so you in the time domain you pick this j omega zero you multiply those coefficients at a particular frequency and what you're doing is shifting so from a set of coefficients for a low pass filter you should be able to create the coefficients for a high pass filter for a band pass filter uh, for a band stop filter, even by using this shifting property. So these properties that we are looking not only are important for understanding better the continuous time Fourier transform and the properties of the continuous time Fourier transform as a technique for signal analysis, but they are critically important to understand them as a technique for system analysis. Remember that any time that you do a Fourier transform for a signal, think of it what this will mean for a system and the connection between signal and system, since the Fourier transform is a technique for signal analysis, you need to find a signal that characterizes the system, and that's the impulse response. Right. So, 
we explain the properties, the key properties, and that's convolution in the time domain is multiplication in the frequency domain. Multiplication in the time domain due to duality is convolution in the frequency domain. If you multiply times a sinusoid, you shift the spectrum. If it is a single sinusoid e to the j omega sin t, the complex sinusoid, you just shift that spectrum to that particular band as we illustrated here. If you are doing it times some cosine, you shift both bands. And I will pro we explain and provide an interpretation of this result. And this is also, this can be proved using the definitions of the continuous time Fourier transform or unconvolution. Thank you.